This team is super cool, super fun, unbelievably unique, and I promise you, not very many Ayaka players are using this team. So Ayaka is, in my opinion, a very misunderstood and misrepresented character. If you go into Reddit comments or even YouTube comments, you're gonna see some people with their Cheeto encrusted keyboards type up something along the lines of, Ayaka's only good on freeze. I am here to clear up that misconception through lots of research. And hey, I play this game all the time and I'm a pretty big Ayaka fan. I have a top 1% Ayaka just saying, okay, I'm not trying to flex. Okay, in this video, I am going Going to show you guys five completely different unique and very novel ayaka teams that are all extremely viable extremely different from one another i'm not mixing i'm not double dipping i promise and they are all totally capable of 36 starring the abyss so homies let's get into it five banger Ayaka teams. Let's get started. All right, homies, I'm going to start with the most obvious team, the team that everyone thinks is Ayaka's only good team, Ayaka Freeze, because I think it's going to set the tone for pretty much the whole video. Why is this team so good for Ayaka? I think there are two main reasons, and one of them you might not even think about. One is the best cryo artifact set in the game. Blizzard Strayer gives a bunch of crit rate and cryo damage, but the crit rate comes only at its max if the enemy is frozen. So you want the enemy to be frozen. Great, you need Hydro for that. And the second thing is, this is very important actually. Ayaka's burst unfortunately staggers enemies a lot, pushes them back, pushes them to the side, and can sometimes push them out of her burst so that she loses damage. But when an enemy is frozen, they can't move back. They're, 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 <laughs> I'm stuttering. Their character model won't move, which is a great thing. It means they're gonna get hit by all of Ayaka's stuff. So that's why this team is so good. The artifact set, and it synergizes directly with Ayaka's kit. On these teams, you need another cryo unit. As you can see on your screen right now, Shen ha is absolutely goaded. She is a tailor-made support for Aika to funnel her energy, especially with the Favonius Lance, and to just boost all of the ticks of her damage by a crap ton. They are a match made in heaven, but you do not need Shen ha to run a good Ayaka Freeze team. I'm just putting Shen ha as the first example. Another fantastic cryo character to run with Ayaka is Ganyu, but this is a burst support Ganyu, meaning she's going to drop her burst and that's gonna be the primary way you do damage. This isn't a charge attack based Ganyu. This is a Ganyu come in, burst, do damage and drop the cryo res, making Ayaka's damage do even more. And then another fantastic one, I wanna mention Kaya and Rosaria both. They are both solid damage dealing cryo characters that synergize well with Ayaka. Rosaria generates a lot of energy and does good damage. Kaya doesn't generate as much energy, but his burst following Ayaka around is fantastic to keep enemies frozen. And then finally, the healers. I'm talking Charlotte, I'm talking Diona, or maybe even Layla. They are all very good on these freeze teams, but I will say, I think that healing and shielding is a little bit redundant on Ayaka Freeze teams. The reason I say that is because if the enemy's frozen, they can't hit you, bro. They can't attack. They can't do damage to you. So you don't need these kind of characters. Sometimes you want a character that's just gonna do more damage, but if you want them, if they're gonna make it more comfy for you, or if you're against corrosion, these are good cryo options. Next up on Ayaka Freeze is the Animo characters. Why are they so important? Because Viridescent Venerer is a broken artifact set. It raises the damage of the element that it swirls with. It treads their resistance. And swirling with cryo is pretty necessary on a freeze team because you're not doing a melt reaction or a super conduct reaction, whatever it is. You're not doing a reaction, so you need as much raw cryo amplification as you can get. And I gotta say, Kazuha, the absolute goat, is fantastic here. We all know he is the king of amplifying damage, grouping enemies, all that jazz. But he's not the only animal that works. Venti is really good on certain floors of the abyss. I say for Venti, some days he's the best character in the entire game, and other days he's all right. It all depends on if he can group the enemies. And yes, Ayaka can hit the enemies with her burst and her charge attacks and her skill on enemies that are up in the air from Venti's suck. And then Venti Ganyu has fantastic synergy, quadratic scaling. I talked about it in a duo combos video that I actually made on the channel already. This team right here you're looking at, super good. And then finally, Sucrose. I think is an absolutely fantastic animo character that hopefully a lot of you guys have. But keep in mind guys, 
any animo here works. I'm talking Sayu. Um, you know, maybe not anyone like Faruzan or Hazel might not be fantastic, but these are my options and my recommendations for the best animo characters on Freeze Ica teams. And finally, the Hydro characters. We obviously gotta have a Hydro character to activate the Freeze reaction. Now let's start with my favorite character in the entire game. Ix Coco's in the chat. The reason why Kokomi is so freaking good with Ika, she's an off-field Hydro applicator. You place the jellyfish, it lasts a long time. You can come in and burst with Kokomi to refresh the jellyfish's timer so it lasts even longer keeping enemies frozen for an extremely long time all while healing the team as well such an amazing character and then tenacity of millilith for the artifact set is going to proc with her skill boost attack she's got other great artifact sets that you can use like noblesse or ocean new clam she's a really useful character and then her weapons dude thrilling tales of dragon slayers boost the attack of aika if you play really well by a lot and increase her healing because of the hp the reason why that's so good is because on freeze teams you need everything you can get to amplify ayaka's damage because there is no offensive reaction going on so kokomi is absolutely amazing but she's not the only one dude mona goes crazy hard her hydro application is not as good as kokomi it's a little bit clunky her taunt can move around whatever she doesn't heal the team but her burst bro the stellaris phantasm why do i remember the name i don't know but dude it puts an omen on the enemy that just increases the damage that your whole team does against those enemies for a really long time because it actually gets the duration increased when enemies are frozen it's a really cool mechanic and mona actually boosts the damage of freeze teams up by a ton she can also use prototype amber thrilling tails fav codex <laughs> sorry kokomi can't use fav codex so she can run these cool supportive things the bad sides of using mona are the energy recharge is hard because you really need to get a lot of er so that she can use her burst consistently and the hydro application is a little bit clunkier with her taunt being not as good but an amazing option nonetheless. Next up for Hydros, Shin Cho, and I'm also including Yelon. Now, they don't have a big AOE Hydro application. It's pretty single target, but when you're using with Kaya, who follows around you, the Rain Swords, Yelon's dice, follow around you. This is actually a really good freeze team for multiple uh, small enemies on the field. Shin Cho and Yelon, they do a lot of damage, but they don't provide the healing, which is the biggest thing, but I mean, Shin Cho provides a lot of support with the Rain Swords, and they generate a lot of energy. They're really good. I would say they're better against multiple targets or if you want higher damage, but they're less consistent and they're worse in an AOE situation. And then finally, a Hydro character that is making absolute waves with Ayaka right now is the queen. You know her, you love her, Lady Farina. I've already said it a couple times, but it's hard to amplify Ayaka's cryo damage on freeze teams because there's no reaction. Well, who amplifies damage? A crap ton, dude is Farina with her burst and she applies Hydro for a very long time. So dude, you slap on Kazuha for even more damage amplification and then who goes in the last slot? Who better than the brand new four star we just got who heals a ton, synergizes perfectly with Farina, Charlotte. This team goes so hard. Charlotte at C1 is a lot better, I will admit. And then the one little downside about this team is that Farina applies Hydro actually for such a long time that it can actually be hard to get a second or third cryo swirl on the abyss floor that you're on. And swirling cryo is a lot more important than you may think, okay? It's gonna amplify Ika's damage by a ton. So just letting you know, keep that in mind. Maybe you use Farina's charge attack to switch to the ocean in, get that swirl, all that jazz, just something to think about. But this team puts up insane numbers. So this isn't a full Ayaka guide, okay? But I do wanna let you guys know what is the best artifact set for the current team that we are running. And guys, you gotta run Blizzard Fair on Ayaka Freeze. I'm, I'm that serious, bro. You get the 40% crit bonus from Blizzard Strayer, and you get the 15 crit bonus from Cryo Resonance. It is almost 100% necessary that you are on Blizzard Strayer on a freeze team with Ayaka. And of course, you're gonna wanna stack as much attack, crit rate up to 35, crit damage, and energy recharge as much as you can. Energy is such an important thing on Ayaka. That's why weapons like 
Aminoma Kageuchi are so good for her. You get attack, hard to come by on freeze teams, and you get the energy. But there's lots of good options, Wolf Fang, all that good stuff. Check out a guide for those things. But just want you know, Blizzard Strayer is the way to go. So homies, I started with freeze because I think it truly sets the stage for the rest of this video. All of those characters, guys, mix and match. Whatever animal you got, whatever hydro you feel like, whatever second cryo you feel like. I showed you guys the most optimal teams in my opinion, but dudes, you can mix and match them all around. And these kinds of characters are going to come up throughout the rest of the guide, and I'm not going to super elaborate on them, okay? Like Sucrose, Kazuha, Farina, they're gonna work on some other teams in this guide is what I'm trying to say. So you will already know why they are good, and I won't have to super elaborate. Homies, let's talk about Mono Cryo. What this team is, is it's Ayaka, it's a Cryo character, it's potentially even another Cryo character, we'll call that the Flex Slot, and then, once again, we want an Animo for that Viridescent Venator Shred. Why is this team good? Why is it better than the Freeze team? Well, pretty much, this is the Ayaka team that you can run in any situation against any kind of enemy, especially bosses, ones that can't be frozen. The only enemies you can't use this against are enemies that are immune to cryo, or they just have insane cryo resonance. Copelius gang, okay, we hate them. But this team is just pure, relentless cryo damage, all amplified from your Viridescent Venera character, or maybe even a character like Shen Ha, or gone you. This team isn't exactly novel. There's not exactly any fun reactions going on, but my dudes, you are going to be able to pump out insane cryo damage against any kind of enemy. You are not locked behind freeze. So let's talk about the cryos you can run. Shen Ha, I already went over it. Dude, she is tailor-made for Ayaka. It's a no-brainer. Gone you, fantastic. Once again, big cryo damage to add to the mix. Maybe weave in a charge attack here and there if you're bored, but you get the cryo res as well. And then Layla, once again, all the supportive cryo characters, they might be actually more useful on this team than freeze because the enemies aren't gonna be frozen. They're gonna be moving around and they're gonna be attacking you. So the supportive characters like Layla, like Diona, and Charlotte are going to be pretty beneficial. And then, once again, we've got Rosaria and Kaya. I look at them as the free-to-play, easier-to-obtain fellow cryo DPS characters that we can slap on the team, benefit from Viridus and Venerer, and just try to generate a bunch of cryo particles and do a bunch of cryo damage. Now, I said that there was a flex slot where you could run that third cryo or a different kind of character. So the two that I wanna highlight are Bennett. Look, Bennett, the absolute goat, Insane healing, but the biggest thing is massive attack buffs to Ayaka. Now, why wouldn't you call this a melt team? If you are playing this team right, guys, Bennett is not going to swirl pyro ever. You're not going to, you know, melt the enemies ever, maybe like once or twice with Bennett, but what is happening on this team is the damage is facilitated by just raw cryo damage from Ayaka, getting boosted by Bennett's attack buff, and then of course, Kazuha and Shen Ha. Bennett's pyro ability isn't really doing much on the team. It is just amplifying her damage. So I still think of this as a mono cryo team in a way. And then the next one is Farina. Are you tripping, bro? Isn't this just one of those freeze teams? Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter if the enemy can't get frozen because Farina is still going to do damage with her skill, great, but she is going to amplify the damage of Ayaka, whether they're frozen or not, by a ton of damage. And yes, of course, we're gonna switch Shenha to Charlotte on a team like this. Going back into the artifact stat portion of this video, guys, Blizzard Strayer is still going to be really good even on Mono Cryo. You get the 15% cryo damage bonus, and you get 20% increased crit rate. That is, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of crit rate, okay? It's not the 40 that you normally get, but you're still gonna have cryo resonance. You're gonna have a lot of crit rate. So you're gonna need a little bit more to make up for not getting the bonus 20, but you get another bonus on the team. Since you're running so many cryo characters, you're generating so many cryo particles that you can actually afford a little bit less energy recharge on your Ayaka, which should hopefully let you get that bonus crit rate that you need. But you can run some different sets on here. I'm talking two-piece Blizzard, two-piece attack, two-piece Blizzard, two-piece Mara Chelsea isn't even completely trolling, but I would still try to aim for Blizzard. I think it is the best set for Mono Cryo. Next up is a very fun Ayaka team that you may have actually heard about, you know, through the grapevine. It's Hyper Fridge driven by Ayaka. You take a Hyper Bloom team. You need a Hydro character, Xingqiu and Yelan, fantastic. 
the Electro to proc the seeds, Raiden or Kuki, amazing. And then finally, a Dendro character, where I think Nikita is numero uno for sure, but I think Yao Yao works very well as well. This team starts with Hyper Bloom, which is a broken elemental reaction. The Electro character's Elemental Mastery makes these seeds that you proc do a ton of damage very fast. So where does Ayaka fit in on this Hyper Bloom team? If you do not know, about the fridge mechanic, let me break it down for you. It is a name dubbed by the community, but it is pretty much the properties of both Cryo and Dendro on an enemy. They can live on an enemy at the same time. You can see it over an enemy's head, both Cryo and Dendro. When a Hydro reaction, Hydro skill, whatever, comes into contact with an enemy with both of the elements above their head, first, it goes through the cryo and then it gets to the dendro. So you get to freeze an enemy. Freeze is an awesome bonus reaction to have on a team. They can't attack and you're free to just start chopping them up. And then also because of how it works, it goes through to the dendro without completely erasing the dendro. So sometimes you can get two seeds for your hyper bloom instead of one. So what this is doing is you are now freezing the enemies, which is amazing, and you are generating more seeds for a Hyper Bloom team, which just means more damage. And the reason why Aika is so freaking good on a Hyper Fridge team is she can consistently apply Cryo at all times, dude, because of her infused auto attacks. And she does a lot of raw damage. That's what Ayaka does, baby. So you can come in, drop her burst just to do a ton of damage while still generating hyper blooms. And of course, you know, your normal attacks, charge attacks to apply Xing Cho and all that good stuff. Super cool, super versatile team that Ayaka works very well on. And this is the other Ayaka Hyper Fridge team that uh, I was too busy yapping about this one. But yeah, Yelon, Raiden Shogun, and Nahida. This is probably the most premier high damage Hyper Fridge team you can run, but there's no healer on this team, so it depends if you're against enemies that can get frozen or not. Maybe run Prototype Amber, Nahida, maybe throw on Yao Yao instead. But what I'm trying to say is you're flexible. Xingqiu or Yelon, Kuki or Raiden, maybe even Lisa if you're really brave. And then the Dendro, you can actually flex um, a lot of different characters, but I say Nahida's the best, Yao Yao second, and then uh, maybe Kale is a pretty good one too. Coming into artifacts, maybe you could guess it again, but Blizzard Strayer guys, really good on Hyper Fridge because once again, the enemy will actually be frozen pretty darn often against enemies that can be frozen. So you're going to get the maximum benefit from Blizzard Strayer, boosting up Ayaka's raw damage, which is fantastic because Hyper Bloom is going to be doing a ton of damage. Then Ayaka's doing a ton of damage. Let's freaking go, baby. I do recommend Blizzard Trayer, but if you don't have this, you can make two piece, two piece work, no problem. And then talking about energy recharge, you actually do need a ton of energy recharge on Ayaka on Hyper Fridge teams if you want to burst. And I mean, you do want to burst because that's what makes Ayaka so attractive on this team. Is the cry application? Yes, but the raw damage from her burst is really good. So you're going to want a ton of ER. I'm literally talking like 200 plus my friends get an ER sword or maybe even run an ER sands. It's going to be worth it in the long run. So here's a team you might have heard of before. It is Melt Ayaka. Melt is the premier damage dealing reaction for cryo characters, but I got to be 100% honest with you. Melt Ayaka is, it's interesting. It's fun. It's versatile, but it does have its downsides it's not quite as strong as you might think. Without getting too nerdy, ICDs. Okay, it means internal cooldown. Pretty much, Ayaka's burst, you cannot melt every single hit of her burst. It has standard ICDs, so it's either every third hit or every 2.4 seconds. What this means is you can only melt about a third of Ayaka's burst. And Ayaka's burst is everything, bro. That's where all the damage is coming from. But even with that, only 30% of her burst being able to be melted, she can still do a ton of freaking damage, baby. And I have two Melt Ayaka cores that I'm going to share with you. They do seem pretty specific in the characters that they need, but in my opinion, that is just the truth of what is going to really make Ayaka Melt shine with its downside. So the first one is Bennett and Nahida. Technically, you could use any Pyro character here, but Bennett is by far beyond, not even close, the best option, but Nahida is necessary. Why? Because of burning. The burning aura is a very cool aura that, you know, it has Dendro and Pyro on them at the same time, but the big thing is that the burning aura is like the enemy has Pyro 
on them. So Ayaka can melt. And then because of how Nahida's skill hits repeatedly whenever you do, you know, a reaction and whatnot, you can keep the burning aura on enemies for a very long time, which means they will stay burning, 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 as long as you're keeping up Nahida's skill for Ayaka to melt. I have a flex slot on here, Shenha. Very simply, cryo battery, cryo resonance, and boosts Ayaka's damage a ton. The last flex slot that I recommend for the Bennett Nikita team, you can use a lot of different ones, but the reason I like Toma is because one, you get Pyro Resonance. Two, you get a shield. So against enemies that might knock you around and you don't have a healer on this team. So having Toma is actually pretty useful. And then finally, Toma's burst follows you around. Bennett, Circle Impact. Nagita, she can apply her skill whenever she wants. But the fact that Toma is this moving Pyro applicator with Ayaka can actually make it consistent for you to be able to melt even when Bennett burst isn't up or the enemy isn't burning or there's multiple small enemies that Nahida hasn't ticked with their skill yet. Toma is actually pretty darn cool here. One other thing that my moderator Gophers just said in the chat, he also helped me make this video. So shout outs to Gophers the Goat. The pyro shield that Toma applies helps you not take burning damage because burning when it's on the enemy, it's kind of like they're on fire. So if you're close enough to the enemy that's burning, you will also take burning damage. So Toma shield, very useful on this team. Now the next amazing Mel Ayaka core stems from Bennett. Yes, it has to be Bennett this time and Jean. If you have heard of Sunfire Jean, that is this right here, right now in action. When you're in Bennett's burst, Bennett afflicts your character with Pyro. You will see a little Pyro symbol on your character down by your health bar. And then Jean in her burst will swirl that Pyro off of you and do it to enemies around you. And it happens all the time because Jean's burst ticks really fast. Bennett's burst ticks really fast. So it's constantly applying pyro to the enemy in front of you while also, you know, Viridus and Venner shredding pyro, which is cool, I guess. But that actually leads me to a weakness of this team is that you need to make sure that you try to swirl cryo to get that damage amplified by Ika. But anywho, you're in Bennett burst, big attack buff, and they are constantly getting applied with pyro. I know I just said this so that Ayaka can melt as much of her attacks as humanly possible. So Bennett Jean Sunfire, awesome with Ayaka. And then I have the flex slot over there with Shen Ha. And then once again, Eeks, why you keep sliding Farina into these teams? Well guys, Farina is pretty darn good. So I just want to, you know, let the people know who pulled for Farina that uh, it was not a wasted pull. Why is this team cool? Pretty much. Gene and Bennett apply the pyro so fast that Ayaka can still melt majority of her attacks, a majority of that 30%, while Farina is actually gonna get some vaporizes off of her attacks from, you know what I'm saying, Mademoiselle Rabaleta and um, Chevon Tondante, Aquamarine. I, see, I got one more. Yeah, but pretty much it's actually really cool that you can both melt and vape, amplify damage a ton, and you've got double healers, Bennett and Jean, so the team's gonna stay healthy and you're gonna get those fanfare stacks. Dude, Melt, super cool team. Last thing I wanna say about the Melt teams is that Bennett Nahida is a core, and then Bennett Jean is a core, and that last character is a flex slot. I have Shenha here, I have Farina here, I have Toma here. You can use, you know, a plethora of different cryo or pyro characters in this slot or even animal characters, but I gotta say, these are the ones that I personally recommend. This team's a little bit more limiting, but it's fun. Yes, you are seeing an emblem of severed fate, Ayaka. She is real and she can hurt you, chat. The artifacts are finally changing. I don't think Blizzard Strayer is terrible for melt, but I think you're better off using either two piece, two piece sets or another banger, emblem of severed fate. Fate. You need a lot of energy recharge to consistently get your burst up when you are using characters that don't generate a ton of energy and especially not cryo energy, Bennett, Nahida, uh, Toma, Jean, you need a lot of energy recharge. So Emblem Star Fate gives you that, but then of course, the big elemental burst damage buff. And then the next one, maybe a little bit of a surprise. Right here, chat, four piece lava walker whoever thought i'm not doing this just to troll this is legitimately a very high damage artifact set against enemies that are affected by pyro increases damage 
by 35%. And we already talked about how Gene and Bennett and Burning apply Pyro so much. Lava Walker might just be the highest damage set on this Melt team. It depends on the artifacts you have, of course. But guys, Lava Walker is not a meme. Very high damage on Melt Ica. The final thing I want to mention about this team, depending on your teammates, if they're running Fab, or if you have a second Cryo, you once again need a lot, lot, lot of energy recharge on your Ica. Honestly, you're probably gonna even run, want to run an energy recharge sands if you have it, because you are going to run into energy problems. So Aminoma Kagauchi, great option, and even an ER sands, great option. <sighs> There's one more team. Ain't nobody guessing this one. This is the secret sauce. Gopher shared his secret recipe with me, baby. I'm in full screen just for dramatic effect, baby. This team is super cool, super fun, unbelievably unique. And I promise you, not very many Ayaka players are using this team. So here we go. It is Ayaka Virgin, baby. Let me start cooking with you right now on why Ayaka works so freaking well on this team. We've got the fridge mechanic that we talked about earlier. Both Cryo and Dendro, Hydro hits it, more seeds, that is great. But now, because you have both Nahida and Toma on this team, you're going to be getting the burning reaction on enemies pretty frequently. And Ayaka is actually going to burn off or melt off that burning aura, which is a good thing because when a burning aura is on the enemy, it is hard to get the blooms that you need. So Ayaka is shredding off the burning so that you can get the fridge on there or you can get the hydro on there to get the seeds generating, which when you're running a virgin team, it sometimes is kind of hard to get that burning off and Ayaka does it all while doing melt, amplifying her damage, and doing occasional freezes, keeping the enemies in place. And then we know Nikita, Shinsho, Toma, they all work off field. So here we go. Aika is on field with her normal attacks, being able to apply cryo whenever she wants. But then once again, just like we talked about the Hyper Fridge team, she does a ton of raw damage. So you've got all the virgin damage with Ayaka's raw damage coming out on top of that. And then another little bonus is when you're freezing enemies, they stay in place and it's way easier to hit multiple enemies with a virgin explosion when the enemies are frozen. This team is so freaking cool and I'm showing you the best one right now. Nikita, Shingcho, and Toma. The Toma shield is good for the virgin explosions. Shingcho's rain swords are going to occasionally heal you and give you the stagger resistance, stagger great, which is really nice because we don't have a lot of defensive utility on this team. We just need to kill shit, baby, with this team. Another Dendro character that you can use instead of Nahida, Dendro Traveler is actually really good on here, but you have to be careful to not blow up <laughs> Dendro Traveler's burst with Toma, okay? That's how Dendro Traveler's burst works. You gotta make sure that you infuse it with Hydro and you don't kill your own burst with Toma. But if you can make it work, Dendro Traveler is super consistent off-field Dendro application. And then I got Yelon on there just to show Yelon and Cho are interchangeable. And finally, Yao Yao. So Yao Yao, like half of her Dendro app comes from her burst, which means she has to take the field. But at least you get big heals on this team, which is very valuable. And if you can play your Uegues right, you can keep up the Dendro that you need. It's gonna be a little bit worse in AoE. So if there's a single target that gets wrecked by Burgeon, Yao Yao can work very well. Now here is a clip from the man Gophers himself showing us how it's done with the Ayaka Virgin team, dude. Let's freaking go. All right, goes in. Want to group them? Nice. Apply that Dendro, baby. Let's go. Okay, keeping them grouped. Shing Cho, Rain Swords. Love it. Ayaka, freezing them. Look at the raw damage. Frozen, Toma, Virgins. Look at burning, melt, everything. Yeah, this team is sick. This team is sick. And then you just go over, keep them frozen, blow their ass up. One more time. One more time. Man's cooking one more time. Mark them. Nice. Get the burst. Elemental Mastery. We love that. Okay. Rain Swords. Of course. And here we go. Raw damage. Oh, oh my God. He's slowing it down for us. He's slowing it down for us. Boom. 31K on all those virgins. The melts, the vapes, the blooms. Boom, dude. This team's so cool. And he's staying frozen, dude. Oh my God. Just let him cook. Let's just enjoy this for a second. Mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. The thing about this team is this isn't like insanity burst damage, but any good player, one, we want to play fun stuff in Genshin Impact. Interesting, novel, creative teams. We want to play that. Okay, so boom. Take them out, my dude. Nice. Not only is this team fun, but, bro, I think we all know just how hard the Abyss can be when you're going to need certain elements. It's like you got to get through the Cryo Lectors, so you need a Burgeon team. You got to break through the Pyro Lectors, so you need the Hydro. Because this team uses so many elements, it's actually a lot more applicable to way more floors of the Abyss that you, than you might even think. Last thing I'll add is that Toma is the absolute go for this team. He's just the king of Burgeon. If you don't have him, and I'm sorry if you're excited about this team, but Dia can work as an off-field virgin driver. She's okay, but Toma is a lot better. Coming back to Ayaka and her artifacts for this sick, nasty virgin team. The biggest thing I have to let you guys know is once again, you need a ton of energy recharge on this team so that Ayaka can consistently burst. So, Emblem of Cyber Fate 4-piece is great. 4-piece Blizzard Strayer is also really good because as you saw, they're affected by Cryo because of Fridge and occasionally Frozen. So it's not bad at all, but it's gonna be harder to get a ton of energy recharge onto Ayaka when you're running her on um, Blizzard Share instead of Emblem. And then two pieces. There's a lot of great two pieces. Two piece attack, two piece cryo, even two piece no bless for that big juicy burst damage is not too bad. And now this a little bit of an eeks twist on it. Four piece Mara Chausi. Why would that even be good? Dude, two piece. Normal and charge attack damage. She's driving on field. Love it. She's not getting all the bonus crit from Blizzard Strayer. So 36% bonus crit from Mara Chausi. But, EX, you need to get hit. Bro, the enemies are occasionally burning. The enemies are getting hit by fat virgins. And Thomas Shield, when you're built full EM, dude, it's not going to be able to hold up completely. So, you're going to be taking damage with this team. Okay? So, 4 piece Mara Chausi. Pretty darn cool. Give it a try. Weapons, Amanoma Kageuchi, fantastic because we need a ton of energy recharge. A not so troll option on this team, Fav Sword. I know it's gonna lower Aika's, you know, personal damage by a bit, but dude, she needs the energy to keep that burst up. Doesn't matter, dude, if you have a billion crit and crit damage and attack, if you can't click Aika's burst, you're just not gonna do a lot of damage. I always try to let you guys know just how important energy recharge is. And on this team, you want a lot of it. So there it is. Five completely different team comps for Ayaka to run that are all, once again, very meta viable, very fun, very interesting, very creative. And I mean, dude, shout outs to you, Ayaka, for being a very versatile character. We love you and your giant forehead. Homies, thank you guys so much to all the live viewers here watching me make this guide here on Twitch. I appreciate every single one of you guys. You guys should come follow the stream too because I'm streaming all the time. Streaming gets in, always having a fun time. But big shout outs to you for just watching my YouTube videos in general. Hey, by the time this comes out, did we hit 50K subs? Are we pretty close? Why don't you go down and check and help your boy out and drop a sub to the channel or a comment or a like. It really does go a long way. Thank you guys very much. Huge shout outs to the patrons. We got Zick, we got Gophers, we've got Poison Tongue Boy, Caldo, Cloudy. I appreciate all of you guys over on Patreon also very much. Keeping us, keeping us going, okay? I'm gonna stop rambling. I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic 2024. See you guys later.